Okay, hey guys, how you doing? Good. My name is uh, Darren Tessitore from Boston, Massachusetts, and I now live in Florida. So when I walk around a little bit, I'm going to get tired. Because there's no, you know, we're like 6,000 feet almost here. I'm feeling it, man. I'm feeling it. This is my daughter, Sandra. Her and I travel around the country and we train teachers on a future education program called the Foundation for Direct to Work. I've been doing this for about 15 years now. And uh, I started doing this when my kids were about the age I was when I started doing drugs. So I started doing drugs at around age 15. By the time I was 16, I had seven of my friends dead from drugs and alcohol. So when my kids hit that age, I wanted to find something that I could do to help them understand what drugs were and how drugs work. And that's when I found this program. And then it's become a massive volunteer effort for my daughter and I to travel around and do all these seminars. So I'm going to get started. First thing I'm going to do to kind of help wake us up a little bit, I'm going to do a little communication drill with us. Okay? So, a little different than anything you've ever done before, but it'll be fun, I promise. All right? So, start a drill. Okay, I want you to look at someone near you. Good. Now, look at someone else near you. Excellent. Now shake someone's hand. Good. Now shake another person's hand. Okay, I'm probably all by himself. So shake his hand. We have there he is. Awesome. Now shake two people's hands at the same time. Oh, it's getting crazy now. Good. Now give someone a high five. Good. Now say hello to someone. Hello. Awesome. Now say hello to someone all the way across the room. Great. Now everybody look at the ceiling. Thank you. Now look at that wall. Good. Now everybody look at that wall. Thank you. Now all look right here and say hello. Hello. Hello, end of drill and welcome to my seminar. Okay, good. So first thing I want to go over is what is the definition of a drug? Now, I just want to put a little disclaimer here. Not all drugs are bad, right? Some drugs are necessary. Some people take drugs for their health. Not all drugs are bad, right? But drugs are essentially a poison, right? A little bit of it, one drug will stimulate you. You ever see someone have a drink? One, two drinks, you get stimulated, right? Start having a little bit more, what happens? It starts depressing them. And if you have too much of a drug, too fast, it will kill you. You will die. And I'll give you some examples of this. Guy drinks one beer, beer he's fine. Starts drinking a little bit more, two, three beers, starting to feel a little... Goofy, right? You guys see these guys at the party, like, eh, and then they start getting obnoxious. Now they're four or five beers, six, seven beers. Next thing you know, completely obnoxious, or they're laying down unconscious and knocked out, right? And I guarantee you that if you drank that bottle in 20 minutes, you would either die or have your, your stomach pump, right? Too much, too fast will kill you. You guys get that? Good. So let's take a look at this. A small amount of a drug will do what? What? Stimulate. Stimulate you. Good. So what happens if you have a little bit more of that drug, the same drug? What will happen? Depressive. It's depressive, right? Good. And too much too fast does what? Kill you. That's right. So take a look at this. Who has a bottle of aspirin in their house? Good. Why don't you take that bottle of aspirin? You wouldn't have to do it. Tend to take that bottle of aspirin. You start crushing it up with a little spoon. Smashing that aspirin up into a, a complete powder. It's going to give you about a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half, a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of pure aspirin. Most of it's air in these pills. If you ate that whole tablespoon of aspirin, what do you think is going to happen? 
you would most likely die. It would kill you. The mildest drug on the planet in most of our homes, too much, too fast, can kill you. You guys get that? Super important for kids to understand that drugs can do that. And yes, I'm not saying that all drugs are not safe and that you shouldn't take aspirin. But what I'm saying is too much of the same drug too fast can kill you. That's the point that you know. Right? So I'm going to do a little <coughs> Sorry, I'm moving. This oxygen thing again. So take alcohol, for example. See how we're pouring the alcohol over the ice? It's water soluble. You pour it into the water, you mix it up, it's going to dissolve, right? And you're going to drink it, and it's going to go through your body. Typically, in a couple hours, the alcohol will come out of your body. Most drugs on the market today that kids are seeing, like marijuana, THC, THC is the drug in marijuana, and other street drugs, are not water soluble. It's kind of like oil and water. They don't mix, they separate. And what happens is, when those drugs go through your blood, the fatty tissues around your bloodstream will start absorbing those drugs. And those drugs will then start getting eaten up by your body. Not as much with alcohol, but more so with the THCs, the heroines, LSD, other hard drugs. So actually stay in the fatty tissues of your body a lot longer. And what eventually happens is you have a walk-in pharmacist. The guy or the girl's body is completely full of these drugs. And what that's going to do, why that is necessary to know, is because it depletes all of the vitamins from your body. The major vitamins that your body needs are going to start getting absorbed by these drugs. And it's going to cause the person to have a hard time thinking, have a hard time concentrating, have a hard time being there, and then wanting more of these drugs down the road, being more and more dependent on having to have these drugs. Right? We see a lot of that happening. This is a statistic for the national overdose deaths in the United States up till 2020. 91,000 people died in America in 2020 from drug overdose. Pretty substantial. You can see it went up quite a bit. A lot of the things that people don't realize is what's causing that. Okay, take a look at that top line there. The blue line, that's synthetic opioids, primarily fentanyl. Does anyone know what fentanyl is? Anyone heard of fentanyl before? Okay, good. It's a painkiller. And it's a very, very powerful painkiller with little, little dosages will kill you, right? And what's happening with fentanyl right now is it is being mass produced in China I'm not trying to get political here, guys. I'm not on any side of the aisle here. I'm giving you straight data on what's happening in America right now. The fentanyl is being mass produced in China and shipped to Mexico where they're actually putting it in drugs. And the one main thing they're putting it in right now is pills. They're making counterfeit pills. Oxycontin, Adderall. Xanax, all these drugs that kids are used to seeing or people are used to seeing and thinking that, oh, I know what a Xanax is going to do to me, right? Well, what's happening is it's, it's killing people. And you look at that number, it's upwards of 60,000 people in 2020 died from fentanyl overdose. And a lot of these people didn't even know they're on it. They didn't know it was in the drugs. The drug dealers are putting it in heroin. That's where it started. If you look back in 2016, it was big in heroin, and then they started pumping it into the pills. People started getting scared from heroin. Heroin overdoses started going down, and then they started putting fentanyl in pills. And these pills are being massively produced, and they look identical to the real drug. You wouldn't even know. I was on a plane to New York three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Kid sitting next to me, 19 years old. She's like, yeah, my best friend just died from an Adderall. It was laced with fentanyl. So the kid didn't even know. Thought it was an Adderall. It looked like an Adderall. You can actually go and you can buy these pill presses. I'm going to show you that in a second. So fentanyl has killed 209,000 people in America since 2015. Ohio had 18,900 die in the same period. These are the 20 most death states. Fortunately, you guys are not in here, which is great. So if you go on Amazon and you Google pill press or pill making machine, you can find something like this. And you can buy it, and you can have it shipped to your house, and you can start making counterfeit pills. And it's not hard. And they'll put whatever drugs they want in it, 
primarily fentanyl. Fentanyl is super addictive, but it does kill you. So what's happening here is we had some of the largest seizures in, in, in Arizona to date of fentanyl, massive quantities of fentanyl. This is um, just a few months ago in October of 21. Yeah, we didn't care about any of these guys. It's, it's pretty nasty, right? Anyway, so the whole point here is that we have to be aware that these drugs are there and you need to make sure you're letting your students know that the pills that they're taking may not be real. They may be counterfeit, and a lot of them are. It was 80% of the pills confiscated in Arizona were counterfeit pills. Okay, good. You guys get that? Any questions on that? You know, it's, I don't know. It's people are dying in mass quantities. Fent fentanyl is very addictive, but the wrong quantity, just too much in your body will kill you. Remember that too much, too fast, right? It's the same concept. You know, and literally you're looking at like a pinhead of fentanyl can kill you, all right? Depending on your body, you know, someone a little bigger like me compared to my daughter, maybe a little different dosages, right? Anyway, so now I want to go into what I call a trifecta, the drug trifecta. This is what's happening in America right now. So a trifecta is a set of three things. A gateway is something that serves as an entrance to something else. And then the trifecta gateway is these three things. So 90% of addiction in America started from these three substances between the ages of 10 and 17. So that's 90% of addiction in America can be traced back to these three substances being started between the ages of 10 and 17. Get that? Tobacco, nicotine, alcohol, and marijuana. Now tobacco, is not being smoked as much as it was, so now it's being vaped. How many of you guys have seen kids vaping? I heard a CDC study recently saying 20% of high school students are vaping. I call bull a BS on that, sorry. I have a friend of mine that did 750 schools last year, teaching kids, surveyed the kids, said it was up to 80% vaping. Yeah, you guys, how many of you are in high school and middle school? Yeah, would you agree it's more than 20%? Yeah, without a doubt, right? Anyway, I'm going to get into vaping in a minute and tell you guys some cool things you can understand about how it works and how it affects you and how to talk to these kids about that so they can understand that. Because it's nasty. Vaping is, is horrible for your body. So, half of tobacco users in America abuse drugs. Yeah, that's pretty nasty. 20% of the people in America that buy alcohol drink 80% of the alcohol sold. <coughs> 90% of drug addicts started in their teens. So these kids that we're talking to in their classes, that's our target audience. This is where we want to get them to understand what drugs are, how drugs work, and how drugs truly affect you. Because this step right here, and this trifecta, these three drugs, tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana. So anyone here of THC, tetrahydrocannabidiol? That's the main drug in marijuana that gets you high. It's a hallucinogen. Um, it basically, what it does is it causes you to hallucinate. Now, has anyone ever heard of I'm going to that. I smoked pot back in the 90s. Okay. Back in the 90s, the THC content of marijuana was about 3 to 5%. Marijuana naturally was about 2.5% to 3% THC. So, if anyone tells you that marijuana is all natural and organic, they're buying marijuana with 30 to 40% THC levels in it. That is not natural, that is a GMO. They have genetically engineered this marijuana to increase the THC levels because it gets you more high and more addictive. And yes, it is addictive. THC is highly addictive. So this is an interesting stat I want you guys to try to take a look at here. I'm gonna go from left to right, so smoke cigarettes, the blue line is use illicit drugs. Illicit drugs are hard illegal drugs, right? So like Oxycontin, heroin, things like that, that would be illicit drugs if they're not, like Oxy was prescribed. If you take it on the street, it's an illicit drug, it's an opioid. And then the, the green line is marijuana. So if you look here on the left, smoke cigarettes. So 53% of those that smoke cigarettes use illicit drugs. 49% of those that smoke cigarettes did marijuana. You look at the second set there, did not smoke cigarettes, 6% and 4.5%. So didn't smoke, 
much less likely to do pot and drink, right? And then you look at the heavy drinkers, 62 and 59%, binge drinkers, 46, 43%, non-alcohol users, 44.9, smoked cigarettes and drank alcohol, highest one, 64 and 59, and then non-smoker, non-drinker. You guys see the trend here? This is a trend, right? This is a very important statistic to look at. If people are not drinking and smoking cigarettes, they're not doing illicit drugs. If we can teach them about if they're not doing marijuana or smoking, they're not going to do illicit drugs. So if we can teach them about tobacco and nicotine, which most of the vapes have, just so you know, high quantities of nicotine, and we can teach them about what marijuana really does and what alcohol really does, we have a really good chance of stopping them from doing illicit drugs, which means we have a really good chance of stopping them from dying. Make sense? So that's why I've been focusing my trainings on giving you guys a data on how to talk about alcohol, how to talk about vaping, and how to talk about illicit drugs. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. So vaping, e-cigarettes. So what's big tobacco? It's not a big tobacco leaf. It's huge companies that grow and sell, sell cigarettes, multi-billion dollar industries. Now you have to look at the tobacco industry, right? They have the ability to grow, manufacture, and distribute a product really, really fast, right? Which is partly why they've been heavily behind the legalization of marijuana, which a lot of people don't know. They're the biggest supporters of legalization of marijuana. A lot of their money is going into that. And then they've been behind vaping because cigarette has been going down and vaping has been going through the roof and it's been targeted at the kids. Um, so basically what they did with big tobacco is they denied how bad it was for your health. Anyone remember back in 1995, there was a panel, a congressional panel of about six doctors that got before Congress and told them that, that cigarette smoking did not cause cancer. This is in 1995. Google it, there's a video on it. And these are prestigious doctors saying cigarette smoking does not cause, cause cancer. They're denying the health effects of it, trying to get the tobacco sales back up. They targeted kids. Remember back in the 50s and 60s? I don't know if any of you remember this, but they were promoting heavily to kids. Joe Camel, right? It's safe, it's effective, doesn't hurt you. Parents were smoking. And then what they did was they formed political lobbies, and then again, they faked the science. These are your stats for tobacco smoking. 1954 at its peak, started crashing really hard around 2018. And then what's happening, it's they're basically doing it all over again with vaping. The kids are being targeted, and this is your stat as of 2018, which, you know, after this, it just goes to the roots. There's 20%, I don't believe. But this is based on a survey, and you guys know when kids get surveyed, a lot of them don't answer the truth, right? So, what's a vape? There's three parts to a vape. First, you have your liquid, which is nicotine or a flavor. The second part you have is a metal <coughs> heating component called an atomizer. Heats up to about 250 to 400 degrees, depending on the device. And then you have a power support. Uh, source, a battery, right? And what's happening now is they're being able to get these vapes in all kinds of forms. That's a sweatshirt that is a vape. That's a watch that's a vape. That's a pen that's a vape, right? So what's happening with vaping? Why is it so bad? Like, it's just water, right? I mean, how bad can it be? It's a liquid, it's a vapor, right? So one thing you need to know is that little metal coil, that little atomizer, 90% of them are made in China. Has anyone ever worked in the steel industry here? So by trade, I'm a consultant. I go into companies and I help them with stuff. I had a big steel company that was my client in uh, Atlanta for years. And they were, um, they basically dealt in steel. And I learned a lot about the steel manufacturing regulation laws, especially in China. And they're very, very limited. Meaning they can put lots of different elements in the steel that isn't just steel. We're talking arsenic, lead, nickel, tin, these hard, deadly metals are in that steel. So what happens when you take a piece of metal and you heat it up to 400 degrees and then you draw a liquid across it and that liquid turns into a vapor? What happens to that steel? Does anyone know? Okay, I'll tell you. That steel comes off. Parts of that steel will come apart and go into those vapor liquids. So when you think you're inhaling 
a liquid, you're literally inhaling little minute particles of that metal, like arsenic, lead, and tin, are coming off of that vapor and going into your lungs. You guys remember the cilia in biology class, those little veins in your lungs? Well, what's happening here is the steel, those little particles of heavy metals, are going into your cilia and they're clogging them and they're causing them to explode. And if you want to get disgusted, Google images of popcorn lung. It's the cilia exploding. And does anyone know if cilia grows back? Anyone answer that? Does cilia grow back? Doesn't grow back. Cilia does not grow back. So you're exploding parts of your lungs that will never grow back. So literally you're shutting off your lungs. It's scary, right? And that's the metal. That isn't even any of the chemicals and drugs that may be in the vape. Right now, you, I don't know if you know this, but you can turn any drug into a liquid. Any drug can be turned into a liquid. I had a really good friend of mine, Bud Chonacy. He's um, the... He was a couple years ago the director of the Louisiana Dry Bread Association. His son went to LSU, was in a car with some friends, and they handed him a vape. He just thought it was a vape. Took a hit, had PCP in it. They kicked him out of the car, got lost, roaming around the city, completely out of it for about two days. But his, his wife, Jill, had to go down to Louisiana, LSU and find him, and they found him. He was so thankfully okay. But the point is, you don't know what's in these vapes. You don't. You just don't, especially if someone's handling you. And a lot of these kids that are vaping are vaping THC. Michigan State Police did a drill. They took 300 kids under 18. They sent them into convenience stores and gas stations around the state and said, we want you to go into the store and buy THC pods. These are little pods that have THC in them. 95, 98% straight THC. That's the drug you get your heart, right? That's the main component of marijuana. 85% of them walked out with THC pods under the age of 18. Not carded. The state police went back and were like, what the hell's going on here? A lot of these gas station attendants and convenience store people didn't have any idea that these were THC pods. Didn't even know what they were. The kids are like, I want that. Okay, seven bucks, ten bucks, whatever it is. Thank you. Have a good day. Kids got THC. Straight up THC. And that's highly addictive and very deadly. So, the manufacturer growing THC. Manufacturing. So they're growing it and they're, they're extracting it from marijuana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're basically pulling it out. And they're doing the same thing with marijuana where they're, they're, they're genetically engineering it to be more potent. Right. So this is a study that is sad to say we don't have a lot more data on. COVID hit, we started losing the numbers on what's actually happening with vaping. But from January 1st to February 4th, 2020, we had 2,700 cases of vaping lung injuries reported and 64 deaths in 24 states in one month from being out. Yeah, so it's it can be 25 to, to 30 to 40 percent, depending on who's growing it in the plant. Yeah, so it's it's hot. You know, and if you go into any of these legalized states and you walk into these pot shops, they'll tell you right on the jars what you're buying. This is 10%, this is 12%, this is 20%, this is 30%. You know, the, and there's different strands, you know, like the higher percentage will knock you out. Some lower percentage with certain strands will get you more excited for a quicker amount of time. So they've kind of, they've engineered this to be like an up and a down. Like the stativia basically means like sit still, sit, sit there. And it just kind of like knocks you out. So they have different strands. We've probably read these strands. But the point is they're genetically engineering, right? So this is vaping, what's happening with the deaths. Um, so I'm going to get into a solution now on what we can do about this. Before I do that, does anyone have any questions for me? I can give it to you. Yeah, I'll give you, I'm going to give you a link and give you my email address. I can send you guys this PowerPoint. I also have a PowerPoint on vaping which was built by my, my daughter and I, my 16-year-old daughter and I did a seminar for a thousand LA students during the pandemic. They asked me to do something on vaping. So I wrote a whole presentation and then she tweaked it for 16-year-olds. And they did the presentation to all these kids at the end of the week, they each got three seminars a day. They said this was the best one they liked. So she did a great job with it. So I have that PowerPoint, I'll show you guys how to get it. You can download it and you can literally just show it to your kids as much as you want. Okay, any other questions? Okay, good. So what is the solution here? 
It literally is straight up education. We have to educate the kids on what the drugs are, what the drugs do, how the drugs truly affect you so they can make self-determined decisions. We can't just keep saying, don't do it, it'll kill you, don't do it, it'll kill you. We have to teach them what they are. You know, you think about it, if you understood that the heavy metals from the vape could literally cause your lungs to shut down, a good percentage of these kids are going to be like, what the heck am I doing? Why am I sucking these heavy metals into my lungs? They're shutting me down, and they're going to kill my lungs. These kids just don't know that. And I guarantee you, if they did, we would not be seeing the epidemic we're seeing with vaping right now, right? So it's literally just a matter of proper education. And I'm going to give you guys some tools here. So this is the Foundation for a drug Free World. This is the organization that I've been volunteering with for about 15 years now. Um, it's a free drug education program. All the materials are 100% free. You can have them in any quantity that you want, literally any quantity that you want. I did a seminar for 1,000 health teachers in Alabama, and we shipped them 1.8 million books, all for free. Right? We have some great supporters. The Church of Scientology prints our materials at cost, so we don't really have to pay much for the materials, which is amazing. So we have, and we have tons of other people that will donate money to this. So it's, it's, a, it's well backed and it's here to stay to help educate these kids. So what we've discovered is that informed youth are drug free youth. The truth about drugs program, it's easy, it's effective and it's 100% free. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through what our program looks like. This is our educator kit right here. It's a little bit more than most of you are gonna need in the drug right community. So basically what you get when you order the kit is you get a full curriculum. It's 19 one-hour lessons. Am I hitting buttons? It's 19 one-hour lessons. Each lesson goes into a different subject. And you can literally walk yourself through the curriculum covering whatever drug you want to cover. And then we have a series of booklets, which I'll get into in a second, and then we have our documentary. We also have an online portal for you to go and create your classroom. We can build a free classroom and you can send your kids a link. They can log in and you can send them lessons that they can do. If you go to drugfreeworld.org, we also have a free course that anyone can do. So if I recommend you guys all do parent nights here. I recommend getting the parents involved in this. At the website drugfreeworld.org, there's a free course on there. The parents can do that course with their kids. And after each chapter of the course, they can print out a certificate and show you that they did it. If you can get the parents to do this, super, super effective. A lot of parents have no idea what's going on. They don't know what they're talking about. And they'll tell their kids, don't do drugs. And then unfortunately, a lot of them are going to smoke and weed. So then the kids get sucked into that trap, right? It's a thing. So this is where our materials are. I'll send you guys this PowerPoint too. Go to your world report slash downloads. You can download all of our materials there. When you go there, you'll see that we have our booklets. You can download the PDFs. These are the booklets. They're super small and super easy to read. This one goes over all the different drugs, what the drugs work, how the drugs work, what the drugs do, short-term, long-term side effects, right? And then we have our, our, our different topics like marijuana. We just finished this one with the DEA. Very effective data in here, really giving the kids a good understanding of what the drugs do and how they work. You can download the PDF, so if you want to hand these out, you can let me know how many you want and what you're funding. And then we have some posters you can use around the school. We have some our, our educator guide, that full curriculum in PDF form that you can download. You can also download some pledges. There's some homework assignments that are in there if you want a PDF version. And then there's our public service announcements. The PSAs, they're anywhere from 60 seconds to a minute, 10 seconds, really hard hitting, very simple, very basic. And then we have our full documentary. This is the uh, Truth About Drugs documentary. It's 90 minutes long. Each chapter goes into a different drug. We have it in DVD where you can download it. And each chapter goes on what the drug is, how the drug works, how it's made, how it affects you, and then what it's done to people that have been there and done it. And it's literally former drug addicts and drug dealers talking about the drugs. So it's very real to these kids. It's, you know, it's not just a teacher saying, don't do drugs. It's people that have been there and done it. And you can break it up into sections. You don't have to sit there and show them a 90 minute video. I don't recommend doing that. Um, I recommend pulling out a lesson and walking them through it. I did create a PowerPoint for marijuana, alcohol, and prescription drugs as well. 
where you can download that and it has the videos and the public service announcements embedded into it. So you can literally just play that and then walk it through and it tells you when to talk and to direct the kids and ask some questions. But the key is get them involved, get them in communication, right? And then like I told you a minute ago, this is on our website, brickfreeworld.org, you'll see right here, we have where it says enroll now for our free course. Anyone can go and do that. That's where I recommend you send your parents with their kids. Have them do this with the kids. And after each chapter, they get a certificate. So it's broken down into chapter. Each chapter is about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how fast they go. And then we have our booklets. These are the booklets just so you know what they look like. The truth about drugs is marijuana, synthetic drugs. Does anyone not know what synthetic drugs are? These are like fake over-the-counter drugs. Japan had a big epidemic with them where they were selling them in vending machines. Like, you heard of, anyone ever heard of Pratum? Pratum's a drug you can buy in most states, over-the-counter, highly deadly, um, very addictive. It's just not illegal yet. Soon, hopefully it will be. We have a bunch of people working on that. I know some really good groups that are promoting getting rid of Pratum. But like K2 and other synthetically made drugs, like you've probably heard of like um, meth, Meth is a form of a synthetic drug. It's a chemist-made drug. Same thing with a bunch of these drugs. This goes into what synthetic drugs do. The chapter, the documentary chapter is very hard hitting as well. We have one on alcohol, ecstasy, cocaine, crack, crystal meth, inhalants. These are coming very popular because they're cheap. You take gas, smoke, sniff gas, spray paint, glue. You know, these are super cheap. But they get you super high really fast, but they're very deadly. Again, remember that too much too fast will kill you, right? So that's what happens. These kids are taking too much too fast and they're dying. Heroin, LSD, Ritalin, believe it or not, Ritalin is a, is a big problem. Um, you can snort up, you can crush up Ritalin and snort it and get the same high as cocaine. The DEA classifies Ritalin the same as they do cocaine. They go on the website. So kids will get their prescriptions and they'll sell their pills. Yeah, it's crazy. And then the kids will chop them up so they don't get high. It's, it's, it's nuts. And then we're having, we're seeing the same thing with Ritalin pills being counterfeited. We're seeing a lot of fake Ritalin pills on the market with fentanyl and other drugs in them. We did another book on painkillers specifically and then prescription drugs specifically as well. A little bit different, a little more in depth. Um, and then we have our documentary and then our public service announcement. And I want to show you guys a chapter of the documentary if I can show it real quick. Any questions? No? All right. Let's figure out here. Anyway, don't mind me on the back guy. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip that. So here is my PowerPoint for the vaping. If you want to download that, Sandy, can you hand some of these up to me? This is for our this is to get the educator kit if you want. And then if you notice on the bottom here, you'll see a series of the booklets. So what I did here is I, I put a line for it. You can order the booklets in any corner. They come in boxes of 200. So if you want any additional booklets, feel free to let me know. If you go to that link, I'll send you an email to download the PowerPoint. Okay, you still have a little form on that, that link. And then I will, um, I'll send you the PowerPoint. Now, if you notice on the bottom of this page here, so on the bottom of the page, you'll see where it says how many booklets you want. If you guys want to distribute any booklets in any quantity, just feel free to order as many as you need. Again, they're in boxes of 200. 
If you can, if you can use them, you can have them. That's my motto. If you're going to get them out, take as many as you want and use them. And do whatever you want with them. High school, middle school is perfect. Um, driver ed class, obviously, use our vaping course if you can, a vaping PowerPoint. Um, does anyone need this link still? You guys want to look that? Okay, that's my phone number, cell phone, and email. Feel free to call or text me or email me with any questions you have at all. Literally, I'm here for you guys as a resource. Again, we've been volunteering to do this for a long time because we have a lot of work to do. But feel free to take a picture of that too. That's that's helpful. That's my email. If you call me and you don't get me, I'll call you back. If you need me right away, text me. If you can wait a day, email me. You can. Yeah. yeah. You can order the kit from the Berkeley World website. If you want to order large quantities of booklets, you have to let us know. We don't really have a portal on our website for that. But if you want to say, like, hey, Darren, I want to give out. You know, 2,000 marijuana booklets to my, my middle school, eighth grade students. Great. I'll send you 2,000 booklets. Cool. So take a second, fill that up. Let me know if you have any questions. Yes. Yeah, if you go to directoryworld.org, there's a little donate button there. Yeah, and if your organizations or individually want to donate, go for it. Yeah, we uh, we never seen any of those. I'll give you guys a link to fill out those forms. Uh, if anyone has any questions, let me know. Okay, I'm gonna be doing it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's it's very addictive too. And it does get you very high. And you have to think of like if you're a drug dealer, what is the one thing you want? You want the most potent drug, right? Exactly. And that's where the fentanyl comes in. But if you mix it wrong and you add too much, someone's gonna die. Which is scary. And you also have to look at you know how drugs start getting marketed around schools to kids. Right, you know, one kid just starts talking about this drug, like, hey man, ever heard about this Zufo? It's really nice, it's fun, and everyone's doing it. And then I'm off of that, and the kid's like, well, what's that? What's Zufo? Again, and then they get sucked in that drug, right? Cool, any questions, guys? All right, I'll give you a few seconds to, to, to fill that out. Feel free to take a picture of my number, call me, text me, any questions you guys have, any more materials you have. If you want to volunteer, if you know people that want to volunteer, if you want to get a program started in your school, let us know. We're a complete resource for all of you. And this is a quote from the Special Agent in Charge of Drug Enforcement of the United States Department of Justice. Through the sharing of your knowledge and expertise, the Foundation for a Drug Free World has played a vital role in the success of DEA's demand reduction and community outreach program. So we partner with a lot of organizations. Our goal is to reach as many kids as we can. Cool. All right, guys, that's about it for me.